Hi. I um have a study here for you. Um, my name is Robert Kelly, and uh, we're going to be reading a little bit of the Bible. Um, may the Word of God go forth and touch you. I pray that uh, God will um, will um, bring forth His Word, and uh, if it touches you, know that it's God's Word. Not uh, me, but uh, we are called to preach the word. We'll be reading from the uh, book of Romans, and um, it's a great book to um, start reading. Um, it appeals to your intellect, and it appeals to your spiritual need. It's written by Apostle Paul, and he talks a lot about. Um, uh, your justification before God. How can you feel justified before God as far as salvation goes? Now, are you going to be making a deal with God or are you going to accept His son, Son's sacrifice for you? And you do that by faith. And once you do that, you are justified before God, and you are seen as righteous and holy, even though you're not. You get credit, a foreign a credit to your account in heaven, and you get born again spiritually. And this comes from the Word of God, coming from God into your ears and into your heart. Something happens in your heart. It impacts your will and your mind and it causes you to believe. And at that point you're born again spiritually. Um, and the Word of God is therefore spiritual food. So let's um, Let's get a little portion of it. I'm going to read um, a little bit of chapter 4 and a little bit of 5. I'd like to also say that uh, the book of Romans, many ministers have started their ministries in the book of Romans. In fact, one minister, Dr. Donald, um, Barnhouse, Dr. Donald Gray Barnhouse, was a preacher for 30 years. He had a Bible study in New York City for 25 years, and uh, and he lived in Philadelphia. He was also the minister of uh, Presbyterian Church there in Philadelphia, probably one of the most famous or important churches in, in America. Um, and uh, he, believe it or not, preached in the book of Romans up until he died and had a heart seizure. But he was, he was in a 12-year uh, a study of the book of Romans. And you can actually get this on, online. You can listen to his uh, audio for free. And, and they are tremendous um, uh, study and uh, really encouraging. I'm not going to probably be as detailed as uh, Dr. Donald Gray Barnhouse, but I do want to just be a conduit to get the word out and, as best as I understand it, show you um, the glory of it, as well as try to overcome the oppression and the suppression that the Word of God is, has been going through since the beginning of time, as it actually says in Romans 1, if you ever get a chance to read it. And if you do read it, it only takes like five, ten minutes a chapter. It's not like these huge long chapters. You can read the whole book in, you know, one sitting. So, um, there are only fifteen chapters. So, uh, let me continue in, uh, Romans chapter 3, I mean chapter 4. And 
whom may we hear the word of God. Therefore the promise comes by faith, and starts in verse 16, so that it may be by grace and may be guaranteed to all of Abraham's offspring. Okay, I think I read that last time. I'm going to jump down to 18. Against all hope, Abraham, in hope, believed, and so became the father of many nations. Just as it had been said to him, so shall your offspring be. Without weakening his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead since he was about a hundred years old and that Sarah's womb was also dead. But Sarah was about 90. And uh, Paul is quoting uh, Genesis here, discussing uh, Abraham and Sarah, and uh, showing what faith in God really is and what uh, it brought forth. And continuing. Um, Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised, even though they were really old, he's saying that God can do it. And this is why it was credited to him as righteousness. That's what the Bible says, reading in verse 22. The words it was credited to him were written not for him alone, but also for us, to whom God will credit righteousness for us who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. He was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. And that's the end of chapter 4. It's a good word that he ends with justification because that's pretty much the topic uh, most important thing to understand. So that's why I can um, say with confidence based on words God, God the word of God that I'm I'm okay with God right now. He's not mad at me anymore. He he's um he he um pour out his wrath on, on Christ and, and the cross and instead of me, which I deserve because I'm a sinner and I've fallen short of God's glory. So there's good news for everybody. Um that's the message here. But it's, it's, it's something that's hard to understand. It, it has to be spiritually discerned. And um, I think we're conditioned, you know, that if something is too good to be true, it's, it's not true. And like I was saying in an early chapter, a uh, uh, video that, you know, the Santa Claus effect, that people don't want to believe that there's a, a, a being. They've never really resolved that in, the, in their hearts. And they were hurt when they were such a young child. And, you know, when they wanted to believe and try to straighten it out, they were they were marked by their peer group and their authority group. And 99% and of uh, adults never really um, resolved this problem. Um, well, maybe not 90%, maybe 90%. <laughs> but uh, anyway, let's read chapter 5, the first couple of verses, because there's something good there for us, too. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God, through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. Okay, so two things there. Again, um, he's saying uh, now that he's talking about our identity, and we have gained something here. We have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. So we are standing in grace, totally forgiven. Past, present, future sins are all covered by His grace. And we have gained access to it by God. And not only that, but now we have peace with God. He's no longer mad at us. He, he can never punish us again. Um, and, and that is uh, explained fully in, in uh, chapter 3 and 4, but the, the summary uh, message here in verse 5 is, is we have peace with God now, and we can have confidence, as it says in Hebrews, to come, come to Him, um, because He is our friend now, He's not our enemy. He has reconciled 
himself to us. Um, and then the next verse says, And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. I'm going to end right there tonight and just um, hope that you heard these words and if these words spoke to you, that is the gospel message you're hearing. Uh, a message that um, is not discussed. Um, unfortunately, with, you would think it would be discussed, as I said before. Um, it's kind of ironic or a, a paradox um, that we have all this ability to communicate and we're not hearing the message of forgiveness and, and peace that's being offered because today is the day of salvation and we can get saved any day today if we just hear the word of God have it come into our hearts impact our will and impact our mind and cause us to, to call out to God and that's what I did one day um, 13, 17 years ago and um, I noticed a, a, a real change right away my whole life led up to that I was 27 years old so I um, just want to uh, end and conclude by just um, asking you to think about what we shared tonight thank you